Hello everybody, this is Mrs. Ellsworth. In this section, you're going to be excited because you know a lot of this already. This is talking about the four states of matter. Most of you mentioned that you know three states, solid, liquid, gas, but we're going to be talking about plasma also. In the second part of this, we will be talking about what do these atoms and molecules look like when they're in their different states of matter. Sometimes it is called different phases of matter too, so you'll have to adjust depending on which source that you're looking at. And then last but not least is the third section which is on the gas laws. Okay, there are four states of matter. The very first one we're going to talk about is solid. And solid, like if I was going to pick up this eraser right here, it has got a shape of its own. In fact, it also has its own volume. I can measure it. And um, it's, the atoms are all very close together and they're in a very tight pattern and they are in a nice crystalline shape in this case and that was a good example of it because solids they have their own shape and their own volume so quite often you'll see this definition down here at the bottom that so solids have a definite shape and a definite volume meaning it does have a shape and it does have a volume now liquids our, our second state of matter that we're talking about, our phase of matter, liquids, they don't have any shape. They take the shape of the container. So, so it, it'll spill all out and go really flat if there isn't a container, won't it? And it'll spill all over. But it does have a volume. We know how to measure the volume. We'll measure, we'll measure the volume with a graduated cylinder. Now the atoms are still very close together, but they are not in a nice pattern like a crystalline shaped hat. It, but sometimes they're in like little strings and they're still really close together. Now they, you'll see this definition often as li liquids have an indefinite shape, meaning no shape, and they have a definite volume, meaning it does have volume. You will see this definition quite often whenever you're looking up the different states of matter for liquid. Now gases, you notice that this cup now has a lid on top of it because gases would go and escape everywhere because they have no shape, so they take the shape of the container and they have no volume. And the atoms are very far apart, they're alone, and they're in, um, well, unless they're molecules, like uh, a water molecule could be also a gas too, and they're, they're just flying around in random order. Now, you'll often see the definition again down here as an indefinite shape, meaning it has no shape, takes the shape of its container, and has an indefinite volume, meaning that we can compress it. It doesn't, I mean, we can compress it to a smaller size or else it could take up the size of a whole room. So it does not have shape or volume. Now, the fourth one is different. It is not what you've seen before, but it is, has got some similar properties to gas. And therefore, it has no shape, it has no volume, and on Earth, um, almost all the matter is either solid, liquid, or gas, and very little is a plasma. So where is plasma? Plasma is occurring in the stars, okay? It is burning. It's also in our Bunsen burner. It is anything that's got a gas that is burning and on fire. Now... You'll notice that says the universe has got 99% plasma. Well, what makes up most of the universe? And that is the stars and, and those type of things. But plasma is so similar to gas, but again, it is on fire. So it has two types of particles, negative particles and positive particles. And, um, and so it's a lot like gas, but the molecules have charges. Now, you'll notice in this diagram, I liked it because it shows this nice crystalline shape, okay? Then we add heat, and it melts into a liquid, okay? And the molecules, they don't really show, but the molecules are supposed to be really close together in this one, and they're close together here, too. They're touching in these ones. They're really close together in this one, so this isn't the best picture for that, but it still shows how that they're in a nice, orderly shape, okay? And then right here is showing that they're alone and that they're in a random order. Here again is showing that they're alone in a random order, but look at we got positives and negatives here, shown with different color. And this right here, as you go up the spectrum, there's more heat, so each one of these are warmer as you go left to right. 
Okay, here's another picture that I see of it. Now this one's kind of showing that they've got strong bonds and solids, and liquids have got weaker bonds than solids, but they're still kind of held together. And the gases have no bonds, that they're flying away in different, um, in, a, in a much faster uh, pattern, unorganized pattern, I guess, really. And plasma is the same exact thing as gas, and it should have arrows on these ones, and they should show that they're negative and positives. I guess we're going to be doing a kinetic dance in class tomorrow, so be thinking about if you're a molecule, what would you look like in each phase of matter? Okay, now thermal expansion is something to talk about because everything expands at its own rate. Now you'll notice, at, like in the sidewalks, they've got a sometimes a um, that the cement men have put a line across between different pads of cement. And you'll notice like in our school classroom, I'll show you where we've got some expansion joints there too, but that everything expands and expands at its own rate. So buildings, when they heat up, they expand. Anything, when it heats up, it expands and it contracts when it's cooled. Okay, and here's a great example of it. Now, as the temperature increases, it causes the molecular motion to increase, and particles collide with one another, and then they spread further and further apart as there's more collisions. Here's a really cool demonstration I'm going to show you tomorrow with a bimetallic strip. Okay, and it shows, like, if the red would be one kind of metal, and the blue would be another kind of metal, and then they expand at different rates, causing it to curve or to straighten out more. And this is what some of our thermostats look like, because then once it moves off too far from where you have it set, then it'll click and turn on. I'll show you an example of that tomorrow in class. Okay, now you notice I've been talking about as you turn up that energy, okay, then it then what happens is that we now we've got a phase change going on. Okay, and so then some of the solid will come apart and turn into liquid. And just think about an ice cube melting. Okay, not all of it is melted all at once. There are strings of liquid that is coming off. Then we've got it all in the liquid form. We add more energy to it still, and then it's going to start to boil. When it starts to boil, then there's going to be single particles coming out of that liquid. Okay, and then we heat it up and heat it up some more. And if it's a different li liquid than then uh, water, like like some sort of alcohol or else gasoline, is going to then burst. Once it gets into its kindling point, it'll burst into flames, and it'll explode or, or just burst into flames. And then, then that is plasma, and plasma, again, has got the same exact type of particles as, as gas, but they're moving much faster because they've got more energy added, much, much faster, and they also have charges. Okay, so what, one thing that you really need to think about with thermal expansion is this name, that things expand when they get hot. They contract when they get colder. And that's what you really need to remember about thermal expansion. I'm sorry, this slide should have been right after that other one on thermal expansion. Sorry about that. Okay, now I was talking about phase changes, how when you go from 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 solid to liquid to gas to plasma that you're adding more energy to it. So there are different phases between each state. So like melting, and this is great. This is some science that you already know the terms to, so you're already going to know what's happening. Melting is when it is going from one state to the next, a solid state to a liquid state. So isn't that cool? So it's a phase change where it goes from a solid to a liquid. Freezing is just the opposite. It's the phase change where it goes from a liquid to a solid. You notice that I say the beginning of it, it's a phase change. Okay, sometimes they have um, freezing points and melting points. And when you say freezing point and melting point, we're talking about the temperature at which this occurs. Okay, so um, what is the freezing point? Okay, that's the temperature at which a substance freezes. This is not good enough. This is what's written in your book. I will say to you, it's the temperature at which a liquid changes to a solid. Okay, the temperature at which, that's how you always see anything's got a point in the back of its term to define. It always starts out with the temperature at which. In this case, a liquid changes into a solid. So then the melting point 
would be the same exact thing, but backwards. The temperature at which a substance goes from a solid to a liquid. Okay, vaporization, okay, boiling. Okay, this is where the liquid is heated up and then gas molecules start to escape. So it's going from a liquid to a gas, but this is at the boiling point. It can also evaporate too. Now that is where liquid changes to the gas again, but it is lower than the boiling point. Like right now, if I leave out a bowl of water for several days, it's going to be evaporating, and that is not at the boiling point. That is at room temperature. So, so evaporation and vaporization, very much close to the same thing, same type of phase change, but it's the temperature which is happening. Now condensation is the opposite of evaporation. It's where a gas goes to a liquid. If I go set out a cold pop, on a nice warm afternoon, it collects, it condenses water along the sides of it, okay? And that's where it's taking the water, air molecules of water next to my pop can is getting cold enough to where it can condensate, just like in our condensation tube of our boiling, of our distillation lab, it gets it cold enough to where it changes from a gas to a liquid. So then what is the boiling point? I told you the point means it's defined as the temperature at which a substance boils. Not good enough. It's the temperature at which a liquid changes into a gas. For water, the boiling point is 100 degrees. For alcohol, it was 82 degrees. Remember? Okay, these heat curves are kind of cool. It's showing kind of like your distillation lab. Okay, it's, we've got really cold temperature, and the temperature increases to zero. And for water, it'll stay zero until it melts, and then now it just jumps up in temperature. It takes a lot of energy to get it to change from a solid state to a melting state, because here it's all liquid, liquid, and then now it's boiling. And you know it's going to stay at 100 degrees while it's boiling the whole time until it's all boiled out, and then it can become a hotter temperature. Sorry. Um, just look at the states right there. You don't need to worry about the kinetic energy and potential energy yet. Okay. Now there's two more phase changes that you need to know. One is called sublimation. That's like dry ice. Dry ice goes straight from a solid to a gas. It is really cool. It has no liquid phase. And then there's the opposite of it, deposition, deposit, deposition, where it's like um, the gas in the air is freezing into solids on the branches whenever you have frost. So frost is a very good example of this. It goes straight from gas to solid and it skips the liquid phase. Hmm. There's some examples. Okay, you guys have this, um, this figure in your in your notes and I want you to finish it and I will see you in class tomorrow. I'm going to show you one more figure and I'll be done. We'll be talking about um, the, the gas laws. We'll be talking about them briefly in class tomorrow and how we graph them. Okay, so you need to think about your Dance that you would do if you were a solid, liquid, or gas, how you'd behave as a molecule or an atom. And you need to finish these two diagrams. I guess it's just one diagram. Um, and I will see you tomorrow.